My name is Nona. I'm currently a 16-year-old at Murphy Dane High School. I am. I was born in Miami, Florida, and I'm adopted. My mom works at North Union High School as a high school counselor, and my dad works at o ORI, which is, and he does IT work. How do you think your life is different having white parents than it would be having black parents? Um, I feel like I'm a little more on like the privileged side of being black, is how I put it, because, and at the end of the day, I'm so. Uh, I'm still a person of color, and I still like have those experiences. But since my parents are white, I kind of have the privilege of feeling a little more safer. Like when I walk out of places or when I'm driving a car, like if the police pull me over, I know that I'm not going to get questioned because my parents are white, or I'm. It's going to be. It's just easier for me in some situations because I have white. Parents. Do you want to tell us about your experience being a black woman in Eugene? So far, I haven't run into as many uh, racial incidents as I, as like a lot of other people in Eugene. So I feel like my experience has been pretty positive so far. For me, a lot of it, like I see a lot of it on the internet. Like I get a lot of racial stuff on the internet instead of in person. So, in a way, it's not, it's a little bit easier for me to, like, have more emotions because I don't have to ever see that person in my life again because it's on me. Um, I feel like it's a little bit more diverse and I just like, I just like going to LA and I like the atmosphere a lot, so I prefer, and it's more like me, like Los Angeles is more of my personality than it is. My, since I'm adopted, my par my adoptive family in Eugene, I mean in Miami, lives in poverty. So they struggle to eat. They don't. They can't really get jobs, or they don't. They don't make enough at their jobs. And so it's just really different here because I don't have to. You know, I don't have to. My parents have stable jobs. They have a stable income, and it's a little bit easier for me. But I go there and it's like really hard because they ask me, sometimes they ask me for money or they just like look at me different because my life is, I don't want to say more privileged because that's not the word, but we don't live in poverty. Um, how are you treated as a person of color in the community? Um, really well actually. Everyone is really welcoming for the most part. And then my mom tries, her, my parents actually try their best to um, make sure we feel welcome, even though we're white. They know that how, I, how hard it is, or it would be if we didn't have any black connection, like African American connections in Eugene. So they tried really, really hard to get us connected with like NAACP and like other organizations here. And in your friend group, we're all we're all pretty white. <laughs> what is it like for you, for you? Um, since they're really educated <laughs> and know things, it's not as hard as if they weren't educated. But there's no one I can really turn to to be like, hey, like I need someone to talk to about all my experiences because they just don't know. And other than that, that's all. Like it's not really horrible because you guys are all educated. And you guys don't know with that. But then, so at the end of the day, no one really has the same experience as me. So that that is hard. But in general, it's not as hard as it. So, Hazel, do you have in your friend group, in your guys' friend group, is there? There's been a lot of talk about how hard it is for biracial uh, friendships. How have you guys succeeded so long with your guys' friendship? What is what is the secret sauce and the I mean, I don't know. We're <laughs> we just I don't know. I feel like we just naturally like click. Yeah, we. I don't even know. It's just like. It's different. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, we're both really comfortable around each yeah, other. Right. Um, like we have the, we have the like mutual understanding that like I'm never really gonna understand 
what it's like as a like white person, but like we still communicate with each other as much as we can with our answers, I think. What do you think you learn from each other? as a result of coming from different racial backgrounds? Well, I think for me, she's seen like how my other friends kind of like react to not the things I do, but like, I don't know, like you've seen like how like, you know, those people are. <laughs> so I think she kind of like has learned that like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, I don't know, because we just naturally click. It's like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I think she's just learned like how to like, I mean, like, I guess you just learned on my own. I guess I've never, like, I've never experienced anything myself because of, like, my race, but I've seen things that have happened or, like, been said to Nona, and so through that, I feel like I've learned kind of the impact of what your words and actions have, um, or, like, even the lack thereof. Um, just like the impact of everything. How does your school, how does, how does school life? I'm going to tell you every day changes. <laughs> I, I, every day is different. Since my mom works there, it's, it's kind of different for me because I can go to her and I can specifically say this teacher had did this to me, this, this student had did this to me, so then she can directly deal with it instead of me having to like wait forever for something to be dealt with. But we've had so many racial incidents this summer that they're not getting dealt with. Like even though it's a summer, like I understand like they need a break. But it's like if there's racism going on, especially online, like we should kind of deal with that because we're going to be online, and that's how our life is right now. And if there's racial, if, if there's racism going on online between students, then they need to deal with that, and that's not been done at all. So that's kind of hard. But other than that, I hear stuff in the hallways, but I don't get anything. Um, if you feel comfortable even giving an example or no. two. Um, can you explain that one? Because <laughs> I actually don't remember what he said. You probably do, but the depends on. Yeah. Uh, there was <laughs> there was a guy that someone was like, oh, like, what's your stance? Like, do you believe in in Black Lives Matter? What they're saying, and he was like, depends on if you're black or an N word. And he like posted that just like casually and everyone was like, hey, this this isn't okay, you can't, you're a white guy, you can't say this, this is not okay. And he was like, dude, like, chill out, it's it's an inside joke, like, guys, you just, you just don't understand, you're just like a bunch of snowflakes. And so there was like a big, that was a really big thing for a while because everybody had it like going around the internet and like all of the teachers and the principal knew and they they chose not to really take any action um, like multiple of us emailed the the principal and was like hey like, we haven't really heard anything we just want to make sure that something has happened um, in response to this post because he's on our football team, he's representing our school. Um, like this isn't. I don't want to go to school where racism is like the face of it. Um, and they just responded with like, "Oh, we're doing things behind closed doors. We can't." Like, and I'm about to like tell you. Yeah, we can't disclose what we're doing. Things are happening behind closed doors. So yeah, so there's there's been like multiple multiple things someone said like black lives splatter and everyone was like what yeah that was fine. there was like yeah. a whole account that was like exposing racist on his group but i don't remember what was on it yeah that account. was that was the worst one that, not taken, no. that one was like horrifying um but it's there are a lot of people who just feel comfortable with their racism because it's not being challenged by people who have any effect on their lives. So it's kind of just goes by. And outside of incidents, how do you, do you think that your school addresses the issues of diversity? Not in a very good way. They really, like, I think the teachers have expressed their concerns, like, we need better 
they call it diversity training, which I think is stupid. I think it should just be everyone, don't be racist. <laughs> um, but um, they, we have those, but they're not very good. It's, it's like a 20 minute rush thing, and then it's like not even, we have like, they try, they have like cultural assemblies, but then like all the people who really need it leave, and then they're just like, they're like posting on their stories, like why am I here, this is stupid, like I shouldn't be here kind of thing, and like, our school really tries. Like, I'll give them that. They just need to just change the way they teach us because it's not good. Yeah, it's just they, like, I, I the only thing I really remember was like we had a an assembly on um, about like just Native American like heritage, um, and then they showed us like some super anti-Semitic yeah. anti um, uh, graffiti that was on the school a few years ago and they were like this is this is bad and everyone was like whoa uh, and then that was pretty much it yeah so we were like you could do a little more but what what do you think keeps them from being able to give you a good a good or you as student as student body a good talk on just me because like I, my mom is counselor so I don't I don't want to say I know more but like I just kind of connect the dots. Our school loves going by the rules. Like they're really just like firm rule followers. Like if someone like does something that's not like on like the schedule or like not on like the slideshow, they'll get mad. I feel like I don't know if that's your experience. That's just my experience. So like if teachers like kind of like talk about like some like don't stay like don't say on like what the slides say then we'll get like in trouble we'll be like how come you didn't teach them this like how come you taught them this how come you didn't go on the slides so i just feel like we have a lot of teachers that are like that know what's going on but we also have a lot of teachers who don't really know what's going on and don't know how to like respond to people so I feel like they're getting a lot of a lot of training this this summer and then like hopefully they can apply what they learned to us during school year. But then again, I don't know what that's gonna look like because of the summer. I mean because of we're gonna be online. So. I think it's also like our I don't know if it's just our school. I mean I feel like it goes higher to like 4J, um, and like the whole district. They're yeah. not they're not willing to take that extra step and get uncomfortable to learn these things and they're not willing to make people uncomfortable in order to make everybody comfortable. They're not willing to do that.